Hello and welcome to another poorly done video. Today I wanted to go over this game that I've been working on in Java for a little bit. It's based off of this tutorial, this video tutorial series for a 2D Java game by a guy called uh, Foreign Guy Mike. You can find him on YouTube, you can find the playlist of his tutorial there. I encourage if anyone really wants to learn some uh, how to make a game and check that out if you want. Uh, yeah, the first time I followed that tutorial, I pretty much followed it step by step using every single thing that he did. As I started changing some of the textures, I uh, realized that that wouldn't quite do. So I had to start over. For example, I couldn't, once I had finished completely uh, copying what he had typed, I couldn't change my sprite sheet to be based 80 by 80 rather than... Uh, 64 by 64 I believe he had so I had to start over and as I started over I realized that I could change things I could make them more personalized I could change it so it would be easier for me to do that's why now I can have it an 80 by 80 grid okay here's my move the mouse out of the way this is it so far you can see at the bottom there engine based on engine by foreign or by Mike S or Foreign Guy Mike. And this is just a placeholder title, Quest Quest. I was going to call it Journey Quest, but then I realized Journey Quest is already a thing. So you start with the player selection screen. I don't have different textures for the players. I'm trying to figure out an easier way to do it, but let's just, for the sake of simplicity, actually go back to the help screen. You can uh, use the arrow keys and enter to select your options. Here you only have one option, and that's it's back there at the bottom. So you move with your arrow keys or your WASD jump. Yeah, the jump thing is a little difficult because I feel like different people use uh, or feel the their jump key should be mapped to different things. I think the next thing, one of the next things, going to work on is to have a customizable key mapping. Blah blah. You can see all this stuff here. Who cares? I certainly do actually. Yeah, so I had to um, re-record this part of it because the uh, <laughs> when I recorded the the gameplay, the music was way too loud and you could not hear a single thing I was saying, and I didn't realize that you could actually just turn down the, um, the, the computer recording volume in OBS right here like this. Um, so I had I went actually tur physically turned on the volume of those files, of the music files, so... Uh, yeah, as you can see, the sound effects are still really freaking loud, so let's just turn those down a little bit. Alright, so you move with the arrow keys, and, or WASD, I prefer WASD as it's personally. Uh, you see, you can pick up shark kits, you can shoot the guy, get him to die, pick up ammo. You can see in the top left in the HUD all the stats, like you can shoot it, you lose one, you lose three bullets, and all that chamber, you boom, boom, dead. And you can reload the car. You fall down a thing. Oh no. You have three lives now? Look. Now you have two. Um, let's say you run over here because you don't care about that guy. And yet you run into that guy. Oh no. It took me forever to animate those blood particles, by the way, so be proud of me. You hit that guy again. Ah. Let's say you just hit him one more time. And you don't take damage when you're flashing because that would just be real cheaty if you did. You guys could just kill you right away. You pick up this. Oh, you got three health that time. The health that you pick up in those health kits is actually randomized, so you could get, uh, say, even just one health. See these, uh, these uh, ammo boxes, it's the same thing. So you say you got 28 now, you get uh, 10 out of that one. You can get another 10 out of that one. It's randomized, though, trust me. And when you are jumping, you can press W, press and hold W, or E to glide. You can do it midway through, so you can glide faster as you fall. It just, it just, um, basically starts you with the speed that you end up falling with. So I could press and hold W as I jump and it starts me off at the slowest speed. I could run off this, press and hold W, and just glide all the way down here. And, uh, we run to the end of the level. These are just test levels, so they're not very impressive or big. There's another guy right here, so I punch him to death, pick up ammo and health right away. 
the music in the last level was a little chip tunish rendition of Take On Me that I did. This was, um, it's a... Push it to the limit. From Scarface. This one was the first one I did, so uh, the music isn't exactly the best. I'm going to redo it, though, probably. And these textures, these aren't the original textures. I made this whole tile sheet by myself, and it's not the best. It could be a lot better, but um, I was I was just trying. There's a special thing about these tiles right here, these ones, because they are half tiles. So the player only collides with the top half rather than bumping into the bottom half. So you can walk along the top half all fine, you, but you can jump into the bottom half. And that those were not originally in the game, in the uh, the games, in the engines code that Mike did. So I had to add them in. It took me a while, but you know it was well worth it, honestly, to get them to work. Uh, I do have bottom half colliding tiles coded into the game, but I don't have any that are actually in use at the time in a future level. Speaking of a future level, let's move on. And the game crashes because there is not a third level. So the level system, the way the level system works, the way it was originally designed, um, I realized that that just does not work for me. It doesn't. It, I could make it much more simpler. I could consolidate it. You might hear me talk about consolidation. Let me tell you, consolidation is. I don't. It's one of my favorite things, ever. I, I just. I just love it. I'll show an example of what I mean. I'm sure someone who understands programming coding does know exactly what I mean. But uh, where do I start? Entity. You start with how do my letters work? Is there no just straight up entity class? No, there isn't. So map object. That is the that is a class that all of the other and an entity classes extend from. So you hear it sets all the stuff like the uh, the position, the speed of the vertical and horizontal. Uh, the collision parts, move speed, stop speeds, fall speed, max fall speed, jump start, stop, blah, 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 blah. health, max health, health, with the th at the end, not health. I can talk. Uh, it goes through some collision stuff. So this is stuff that all entities will need. So yeah, it was good that Mike made. Um, a system like this for all entities to extend off of. So you see here, um, player, no, that's player save. Player, it extends map objects. So you, you just, you see these, these things are things that are only used for the player here, which is why they're only in the player class. Um, and you just, uh, in the constructor or whatever, is this the constructor? See, this is the problem. A lot of the terminology people use in programming, I never got the hang of. And I'm trying. If someone knows, and this isn't called the constructor here, please let me know what the heck this bit is called. Alright? So, you see you set the width and the height and uh, the width and height of these sprites here. Uh, all that stuff that is in the map object class enemy kind of uh, extends twice. See, enemy is what all enemies would would extend from while enemy extends from map objects. So you go to your enemies folder, you got the slugger, which extends from enemy, which in turn extends from map object. Like that. Uh, and that, that is at least for I guess for me, a beginner in this is a good system because it it all like it, the inherited uh, qualities, variables, methods are all there in one class. You can go and look at it. If you need to change it across all the entities, you would just change it in say map object or an enemy, and then it's done for all of the enemies, all of the entities. 
it's it's just much more simple and it saves you saves you space in your in your uh, files here which I mean it's not that big of a difference but oh, I didn't mean to yeah it's not that big of a difference but in the long run it's uh, I think it's good practice but I'm no expert I just think it's good practice for me don't take my word for it gosh who the heck do you think you are <clears throat> now the old system for levels was very different uh, you start here with a game state your game state starts with all this stuff this basic stuff yeah all the game states extend this game state class you have your game state manager which manages those classes that you this is what is used to switch between your levels switch between your menus your pause state your player select and all that uh, and the player selecting this was the menu that showed up um, this is the menu that showed the player one player two and back after you press the uh, play button on the main menu uh, you see that here this is the class for that it just runs this the game state manager runs that class whenever you need to do that or runs that freaking thing I don't know what it's called give me a break um, so originally game state manager once you started the game it would uh, just launch you right into level 1a state and this is what level 1a state used to look like it was 405 lines of stuff here and all this stuff like all the events the finishing events the uh, player controls the draw the update of all that stuff the initializing all of that was all done within this one class and then you had level 1b which did the same thing albeit 398 which is what only I don't know six six lines six seven lines saved <clears throat> and it did pretty much all of the same stuff all of these ev start events the end events they were all exactly the same the controls were the same the initializing was pretty much the same the only thing that was different was some of the uh, variables the music the uh, what enemies were in those enemy holding arrays and it, it did all the same stuff in both classes so I realized that didn't make sense to have all of those same methods in two separate classes that did essentially the same thing so I made a level class that extends from game state this now this is essentially equivalent to the way um, where is it enemy.java extends map object dot java it says all those things that you would need for every uh, level such as the spawn points for the sluggers the um, the spawn points for the ammo boxes and the med kits uh, the array list for all the enemies all of the explosions that happen when you die not really it's more of a sparkle than an explosion um, yeah, all that, your HUD, your spawn, player spawn, it's it's all right there. Things that you need in every level, it's all within this level.java. And you can see the new level 1A state uses only 52 lines because the 400 or so lines of all the events, the initializing, it's all in here and this can just since this extends level.java it just calls back to those methods within it to run it as <coughs> excuse me to run it as a regular level like it was before the same thing with level 1b state the only thing that I need to uh, initialize is what the next level is the name of the music the directory place of the music um, the tile set, the map, the uh, tween, which is the like the can since the camera doesn't like just stick on the player, it kind of moves a little smoother. Um, the move scale, the background, and the the background image. 
as well as adding points to the uh, ammo box spawn points list, the med kit spawn point list, and the enemy spawn point list. Those are basically the only things that are going to be different across each level, so that is why you would need to have them for each level's individual class that would just extend from this overarching level uh, dot java. I'm going to add more levels, so I'm sure I could delete these. I just kept them uh, kept them there just in case. I do have backup copies of this uh, game, a couple past versions, but should I delete them? I don't need them. Oop. Yes, I want to delete them. Okay. <clears throat> so that basically showed you how the game worked. I haven't really showed you in depth really about um, taking damage or... I don't know, I did. And also, here's another neat thing, uh, when you, you see your lives up there in the top left, look, you can get hit by enemies enough time that you, um, you, you go to zero health. Uh, people call them hit points or something. I always thought HP stands for health points because I don't know why. I mean, health, it just seems like your well-being. You get hit. Yeah, it's hit points. It's how many points you can get hit for. But, yeah, you see your lives, your lives are going down there. Now you only have one life left. You're on your, whatever, third life this is, I think. So you fall down again, you die. This is your last life. And you're just gonna die. I'm just wanna, I just want to show you what happens. Oh, look, you're out of lives and it's a game over! And you go, oh. Oh. Well, you look at that title. That's certainly different now, isn't it? You bet it is, because I was bored, and so I made it... I made it a little... It wouldn't count as an Easter egg, because... Who's gonna care enough about this game to say, Huh, check out all this Easter egg guy, heh, <laughs> that's great. It's just a thing that it has, I don't know, a 1 or 5% chance of showing up as a pro tip, don't die. I don't think that's gonna be a final title for this game. I don't even know if this game is going to even be complete because, let's face it, Java's kind of outdated. Am I right about that? I think I might be, but not to not, not to brag or anything. Definitely when I'm done doing what I want to do with this Java version, I will be uh, making a Unity version. I've already tried that, but Unity does not like using small size sprites that are, say, 80 by 80 pixels. That that's, They just don't like that, so I don't know if I'm going to have to just scale those sprites up or work on making higher resolution sprites. Either of those is a possibility. I'm going to definitely redo all the textures in the game pretty much at some point, but not right now. In the version I was trying to do before for this game, I started trying to implement a weapon system, which hasn't really worked so far. You saw that one weapon that you have basically is the gun, and... I wanted to make it so enemies would drop other weapons and you could switch on that hotbar that you see at the bottom of the screen. So you could switch between that using the number keys and then say use a shotgun or a, or a machine gun or something. So see right here we have one, like you would press the fire button and it would use that. You press two and it would switch to another weapon, you press fire and it would use that one instead. Um, unfortunately the only thing that works is pressing the different numbers. Um, choosing the different slots. I don't know if it, I don't exactly remember if I had it so you press the button it just draws the red selecting square around the different uh, box or if it actually says alright this slot is selected. What I have so far for the weapon thing is a damage modifier basically telling you how much more damage you would uh, do if you were holding such a weapon and what slot number it's in and what space number. I'm not quite sure what, I forget what the space number is. I don't know if that's, say you have handguns that go in slot one, uh, rifles that go in slot two, shotguns that go in slot three, and heavy weapons that go, that go in slot four. Then there are different spaces, such as the, uh, the dual six-shooter thingamajig. Uh, that would be space one in slot one. And then Another thing would be space 2 in slot 1. I don't remember. That sounds like something I would try to do, but again, I'm not sure. So, weapon 1-1, one, one, 
extends weapon, obviously, you would be doing the base damage. And it's definitely going to be a little tricky for me to be adding a full weapon system, of course getting enemies to drop them, and then adding the picking up thing, so that might come a lot later. Uh, here's a changelog I made from the previous version. They see the major engine rework, such as streamlining level and level state uh, and entities system. You see right here basically what I was saying. Oh, it also changes the hitboxes, but that's not really important. It's kind of hard to demonstrate that. What I want to do is have like a little dialogue thing. So when you hop into the game on the first level, you can like click on a little thing or hit a little thing and it shows up a little text box. Like, you know, those, that talking box thing in Yoshi's Island. Jeez, the, I love that game. That was such a good game. That was a great game. Shh. Um... It would basically, well, I don't exactly remember what that was saying. I don't know if that box was saying, oh, uh, you gotta go uh, save the baby now, so uh, go find the baby and save it. Or if it was saying, you can press these buttons to jump and to move and to eat stuff. I don't remember because I never looked at that. I never liked tutorials as a child. But why would I add them in my own game? Because, uh, I don't know. More music. New slugger sprite, obviously. New enemies and enemy behavior, yeah. Particle effects for enemies, like blood effects when you punch them. I wanted to have like a turret, a laser turret, that kind of sits on a wall or a ceiling, and when you get close enough, it will activate and it will point at the at the player. Like the, it'll have a certain sprite that can rotate. I'm not sure if I can rotate images so small in Java, but. I guess we'll see what happens. And then it would like have a laser that draws a line between the point of where the turret is and where the player is. So it looks like it's actually shooting a laser at them and it does damage, but that's for uh that might actually be a far future plan, but I didn't add that. So weapon system, obviously, yeah, you see that's gonna be down a lot down the road. Mouse controlled shooting, like the rotating of the turret, you would use your mouse to rotate where the player is aiming, and then once they shoot, the bullet would fly in that direction. I'd have to do a line. Oh, yeah, shooting enemies, like a uh, auto-aiming laser turret. Uh, oh, another thing I wanted to have is, like, uh, an XP system that gives you experience and changes your level. Oh, you killed this guy? Plus two XP. Boom. And it has a little bar somewhere and it says look you got these two points once you fill that up you reach a new level once you get a new level you can you can get a like a point to spend to improve your stats like your health or your damage or your running speed it's pretty uh, simple i guess oh and another thing i wanted to do was if you kill a guy you can drop money too and if you pick up that money you can collect money if you get enough money you can go at a shop between every uh, five levels or so and you can buy stuff like weapons Again, that's probably a much, that's probably a far future kind of a thing. But that's basically the plan for now. Oh, inventory, that's another thing related with the weapon. Uh, see, slot one, weapon one. I was trying a few things, so. I guess the next time I make a major update with this game, the next version, you see right now I'm in alpha uh, 0 0.1.2 because. I'm a pretentious ass, and I think that everything I make needs to be super official sounding. I may be being a bit too hard on myself, but I don't really care. So maybe once I get to 0.1.3, I can make another short video saying, Hey, here's what I changed. If anyone cares, even if they don't care, I'm still going to do it. How long have I been recording for? 25 minutes! Holy moly! I don't think I've ever talked that much. Um, ever just ever so yeah I'm trying to work on other videos right now but I have like a week until I move into the college and after that uh, I'm sure my schedule will be so busy but I'll be doing computer stuff so I will at least be happy I do have a video regarding um, fruits wild fruit wild berries and cherries that I've been around the house that I've been uh, that I collected that video is kind of uh, on the back burner right now because it requires some editing. And let's face it, I'm lazy. I don't want to do editing when I have things to buy on the internet, like backpacks. So hopefully I'll try to get that out somewhat soon. If I don't, then, uh, oh well. Uh, so yeah, um, be good, be safe. 
and have fun, kiddos.